the Within Orb podcast. Come get Within Orb. Hello, my name is Jen Zart, and welcome to Within Orb, a production of the Celestial Arts Education Library, a podcast bringing people together around the love of astrology, books. Join me as I interview people about the astrology books that change their life and practice. You can support the podcast at withinorb.com. Welcome to another episode of Within Orb, and today we're flying down to Palm Springs, California to meet Dana, who I met actually at a herbal conference called Veritas Genie. That's correct. 2018. That's wow. right. That was so much fun to see you there and like in the context of plant magic. And here we are talking about astrology books. That's right. And what I found is that astrology happens to be the common denominator in most anything that I enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> so- awesome. <laughs> So how did astrology first enter you? Through the newspaper. <laughs> okay, okay. I've heard other guests say the same, the, you know, the columns, the horoscope columns and, you know, full transparency, I'm a Scorpio. So <laughs> everything that I read, you know, from the horoscopes, we start there. But then when I really started getting curious, I was like, well, what about Scorpios? Or what about, you know, romance? You know, you're a preteen and you're, you know, you have a crush on someone. Well, wow, that's when I, <laughs> that's yeah. when I a lot of like, what I perceived as negative feedback for Scorpios. And I was, you know, partly a little inflamed, like, you know, the Scorpio came out, it was like Mars, like, what, what do you mean I am this way? And, you know, I can't say that I think that all of those things that are said about Scorpios are true. I think Scorpios get a bad rap, but it certainly triggered my interest. And I think a lot of astrology enthusiasts just really get caught in that, who am I, or what are they saying about me, or I want to test and see if this is true. And so that's where the curiosity began. So from there, I actually started picking up books. And one of those books uh, is the classic Linda Goodman's uh, Love Signs. Love Signs. uh, Which is on so many bookshelves. But that gave me my first like view into, okay, Scorpios aren't all that bad. And, you know, (laughs) what are the qualities that are compatible with the Scorpio? And then discovering, you know, what is it about me that features most strong uh, in my, what shows up in my character? So all being the, you know, the author of my own destiny as much as, (laughs) as much as one can be. Yeah. But, you know, that, you know, that actually is a good bit into how my interest in astrology grew from there as I want to have some control. (laughs) <laughs> and I, I heard you say in your own, uh, when you were sitting in your own chair, is you found results in astrology. You know, it's one thing to pray to a deity, but it's it's another to practice out something in, you know, through magic, let's say, or just through sheer prediction and astrology, finding those tools to actually find when to do something, when to prepare for something so that it's more successful. And that yeah. just greater engagement overall. So I was hooked in. I love time. that. Yeah. The control aspect of like when to act, when to hold back, you know, <laughs> yeah. how, how much to push and how much to conserve your energy. Yeah, I'm still. So, <laughs> I think we all are, honestly, like I, I'm still, you know, delighted every time I see a chart and I move it through time. I'm like, oh, look at that. It's coming. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like you can yeah. see it it's there two years from now, whatever. Yeah. yeah. But I think it's funny, too, that um, you'll see the people who have this is some lore about Scorpio that I know. They get this interpretation of being really secretive, but they just like you started the show revealing that you're a Scorpio. And when people get tattoos, astrological tattoos, the most tattooed sign is Scorpios with some kind of symbol of Scorpio on them. Okay, fun fact that when we first met, like the first time that we actually said, hi, I'm Dana. Hi, I'm Jet. I was wearing a necklace that has one of those necklaces that's made out of lapis lazuli and has all your stars and things in it. And you were like, See, they say that about Scorpios, but here you are with your planet's position, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like your actual chart. <laughs> yeah. 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 Wear your chart on your sleeve. Oh my God. Right. Did I just say that? <laughs> right. Wait a second. Okay. Are the house is that clear? <laughs> but, but, that's so funny. Yeah. 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 I thought of, there's so many ways to do astrological jewelry, but yeah, that's funny. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. You, you have brought the Scorpio billboard to the world. It's great. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. If we were going to cast you off to a deserted island or somewhere remote, and you could only take three astrology books with you, what would they be? This was a very hard question, and everyone says that, right? Um, And 
I first have to start with the Picatrix because, you know, my in my first immediate desire is to get off the island. Uh, you know, sure, I would enjoy it a, a whole lot and it's wonderful, but I can't stay there, you know, forever. <laughs> You've got too much to do. <laughs> yes. And, you know, depending on what island that I land on, I might find some of the animals material that's necessary to move. Ooh, I love it. You know, like I, I was I was imagining being on an island in Hawaii where there's a lot of, you know, chickens and roosters that run around and there's there's a call for like rooster heads, you know. And so okay. the, you know, if I'm going to pray to Mercury, you know, and actually get off the island, I'm gonna need a rooster head. So I'm thinking, okay, well I hope that it's at least in on a Hawaiian island or at least a place that has some of this material. But yeah, that's definitely one. And I admit that book is, you know, one, it's old, but it also is beyond a lot of the work that I actually do. But it's one of those books that if you're with it for an extended period of time, it's going to take up a lot of your time. And, you know, of course, you're going to have a lot of time on your hands, right? Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So one of my other books, it's not quite astrology, but definitely related. And this is kind of new. This is the new David Schulke the Green Mysteries, the occult herbarium is what it's called. But, you know, it's all related. As I said earlier, it's all about the common denominator. The illustrations are beautiful in it, and I've not read all the way through it. But it would certainly teach me about some of the plant life on the island and hopefully help heal me. And uh, I think we had this in common from uh, one of your books from your island uh, visit was the medical astrology book. Yeah. And I didn't really know. I've seen it before, but I never really clued into it. So I didn't select it for my island trip. But man, if I could like (laughs) bring it, you know, tuck it as extra, I would use it. Mm -hmm. But this is the temperament book, Astrology's Forgotten Key, that you gifted me last year from Dorian Greenbaum. I'm not going to try and pronounce her her middle name. (laughs) But that is really to help me understand you know, the health aspects, or at least to be able to recognize some of the characteristics and symptoms that I see. This is definitely related to medical astrology and conditions, but it also is talks about kind of your key characteristics, key personality and again, characteristics. So I think in the case of, you know, healing the sick, I think the methodology might be a little bit better for that purpose, but I certainly wouldn't be bored and I might even make it off the island with that set. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, I love the temperament lore because Lee Lehman once said that if you are hanging out with people who have a different temperament than you, it won't lead to disease immediately. It will lead to disease when you eventually break your shape. Like you'll take on the characteristics of the alternate temperament until you can't do that anymore. It's almost like a sponge. Like, okay, I've had enough of this melancholy. Like, get me out to, I need to get choleric wow. again. And that's when disease happens is that. You just spend too long with the wrong climate and it ends up depleting you over time. But it's not an acute situation necessarily. Yeah. Because as I like to say, our charts are where we start, not where we finish. So with temperament, you can see how like, oh, these are the variables. This is the shapes we can take. And then it's like you look at your chart and see like, well, how much can I tolerate, you know, adopting a different temperament for a minute? And then when do you have to retreat and kind of come back to your own temperament baseline? Oh. Wow, that takes it completely from just having a sense that when people say I need my space, yeah, to like being able to see exactly, you know, be able to dose your <laughs> your exposure. Yeah, yeah, much like the herbalism that you're talking about, right? Because you have this uh-huh. spagyric and it's like, okay, we're going to operate with some Mars over here and the Mercury over here and then it's like, all right, enough. We don't need any more of that. Let's <laughs> balance it off. So, yeah, very cool. Have you read any of those? I know. Well, I know you've read this one and I've seen some of your like spagyrics and things, which I believe came, some of them at least came from the Picatrix, but. Um, No, uh, actually none of them did. They were from Robert Allen Bartlett and working with him Uh, in Washington and his classes, which he's just rebranded his Alchemy Academy as TriStar Academy or something. uh Yeah. Yeah. Which is very great. And if you can go to that school, definitely try. It's very fun. But yeah. um, Daniel's book on the Green Mysteries was a mystery, and I did reserve a copy before it was sold out, and it finally made its way to Kaylee. So it's here, and people can read it. And actually, fun fact about that book, this is like a, an episode filled with fun facts. Austin Kopic's mom, Gail, did the calligraphy for it. She's worked on a lot of Three Hands books. I do remember hearing that. And the artwork is just beautiful. I was reading through it, flipping through, and the tea is just done in such a curious way. It's kind of 
lips black, like, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they have a close working relationship. So got to love the mothers of the astrologers. Yeah. But yeah, and the, I haven't actually read, it's huge. So with the, with the green yeah. mysteries, you will have shelter on this. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> and it took so long to produce, it'll probably take just as long to internalize, you know, so. Yes, I think so. I think so. I think it's one of those very organic things that you read once and you read again, and it means something entirely different. So I really yeah. love it for that. And it's one of those books that it, it is an herbal, but it comes with so much lore that mm -hmm. gives you so much more, you know, if you're inclined to those kinds of things. Totally, totally. So is that all three books or do you have one more hiding in there? Those are the three books that I would choose. Now, there's one more that would give me a lot of time. And this, oh my God, this book, this is a hard ass book. <laughs> <laughs> this is The Scope of Astrological Prediction by Mark Edmund Jones. And if you look at my shelf, you'll probably would guess that I'm an older person because a lot of a lot of my books, especially when I look at the books that I started with, they're they're old. And of course, you have to start somewhere, right? You do, you do. But actually one of my cousins by marriage came by and he was looking at my shelves and he said, you know, he's really looking at the the older books he you know he used to draw out charts all by hand and everything and uh, mark edmund jones was one of those authors that he really that he used so i had to get some and so i'm just really starting on that book and i started with the scope of astrological prediction i also have astrological analysis i have his horary book as well when we met and actually when i was a student at your fundamentals of astrology course you were saying that astrology is really meant to predict the future. And up until then, I was really focused on a more modern approach to astrology. I have some really great books on psychology. And that's, you know, we, when we started this call, we talked about, you know, the emotional like relationship and things like that. But when you started lecturing on prediction and zodiacal releasing and all these other things that look at the future and how can you actually plan out your life, I put this on my list as a standby, the scope of astrological prediction, so that I could, together with Picatrix magic and things, but maybe, you know, if that's a little too advanced, I could at least start, you know, looking at how can I predict when the boat will arrive, <laughs> <laughs> when to stand out in the sand and wave my hands. <laughs> so. I think, I mean, I, you know, we're up to almost 50 episodes now. I don't think anyone's actually talked about that specific application of astrology, like I can see in my chart that this will be lasting this long. <laughs> yes, yes. Like, of course. I was thinking more of just the enjoyment of having like, you know, uninterrupted <laughs> time to read as opposed to like. It is know. hard enough to plan my books for, for reading when I go on vacation. When I go <laughs> vacation, I could bring another satchel of just books and I have to be careful for the weight. Like the green yeah. mist is probably not going to make that trip. Besides, it's too precious. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to expose it to elements like water and, you know, yeah. coastal air. <laughs> exactly. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Wow. The scope of astrological prediction. So, yeah, Mark Edmund Jones is a titan from another era. He is. And the charts that he has in there, the, the people that he uses and, and to and the charts that he delineates are, you know, people who are just long gone, but who are legendary in their own right. And at the stage that I am as an astrology enthusiast, I like to look back and then look forward. So what I get from your podcast are a lot of more recent books. You know, some of them also are, have, have aged a bit, but more recent books that I can compare. Like Kaylee likes to compare the, you know, multiple versions of the same book to see what has changed over time. Yeah. And then you kind of have an anthropological window on who was important to Mark at that time, who was important in that era of culture really and and then you can see like who was important and who really like has not aged well in a way you know their reputation did not last or who is unknown at this point and you think like why is this chart here who is this person you look it up and you're like oh wow hyper famous person who i have no idea what they did yeah. or anything yeah. Of that like yeah i certainly still think of zodiacal releasing whenever i see someone who's passed on resurfacing and becoming popular again like what happened yeah. <laughs> so actually, another person who I, my my former roommate Carol just pointed out to me a potential. I don't have the chart of this woman, but there was a woman who shouted out to Paul McCartney that Audrey from Brooklyn loves you, 
And Paul McCartney this month went to Brooklyn and said, Audrey, I'm here. Well, she passed away in 1992, but her family got to interact with Paul McCartney, respond to this call of like, thank you for remembering our mom. It was literally a two second clip recorded of her saying to Paul, like, Audrey from Brooklyn loves you. That is from the past, just like. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you know, talk about like 40 years have gone by. Now it's making the news. Everybody's all about it. Like the actual person is responding. Like the eminent figure that she was calling to is like said hi, (laughs) you know, like I would love to see her chart and figure out what the story is about that. And it was awesome for Carol to bring up like Zodiacal releasing. Come on, let's go. Let's find (laughs) out, you know. So, yeah. I believe it. I've seen it happen in my own life. When I took your course, it just totally like it took a minute because the approach is very different than what I'm used to. I was so concentrated on the houses and everything. It's it's Mm -hmm. not about houses. (laughs) Well, that's just yeah. I mean, it is one specific take that Valen's made up in his own astrological sort of scheme of things. But another way I see it happening, unfolding in terms of not necessarily eminence, but the publication histories of figures. Why would a press bring out this person's book now? And it's not always going to be something that you notice for people who don't have it in alignment. But for people who do, like I'm currently revising my PhD thesis for publication, and I was looking at Walter Benjamin's various editions of his work translated into English and when they got published. And it literally tracks to ZR peak periods all the way. Like every single peak period, there's a new edition that is definitive that you have to like if you're going to write about them you need to cite this version of this and this version of this and this version of this and i'm just like is mine gonna fit in there (laughs) the answer is yes um but yeah you know so you can see that it's just like oh yeah this is an alignment but it's part of this larger conversation like you know crests on a wave like pop 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 you know they're just kind of skipping along i love that i mean even in my own career i changed careers a, a couple times in my life and sure enough when I look at those periods, it's like I had a complete change of career. So awesome. I love that. It helps contextualize it, right? It makes you feel a little better about the shift. It sure does. It makes you feel a little better, a little more confident and just a little more trusting. Yeah. But like maybe not so much in control. (laughs) Maybe, (laughs) maybe. I would say mostly not in control, but with a little bit of, you know, looking ahead for the timing of when things can happen or when to at least try. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. So when when to tell people to leave you alone so you can get into the work, right? (laughs) That's what I love to say about it, too. It's like, this is your art studio time. And so you have to be very careful about the barrier here and guard it with your life. (laughs) Yeah, sure. So uh, one other text I wanted to talk about was the Kaylee Review. This is your quarterly, like... Don't you time this like in the middle of not on, not season or not? Yeah. So Cam Cassidy is the editor in chief of the Kaylee Review. And we were talking about, you know, we noticed a lot of the astrological publications come out on equinoxes and solstices. So we were like, let's do it on the cross quarters. Yeah. I think that's a cool concept. I mean, and again, I was talking about how you use art. I mean, even like the Kaylee Review and <laughs> forward says that this is at the exact angle that the earth looks at the sun. Yeah. I mean, awesome. So, I visited the library, Kaylee, last summer, and I've been thinking about, well, what would bring me back besides just being curious and just being able to go through all the texts and everything, but actually having a project. And I would think that at my level, I wouldn't be researching like a new technique, but I might be search researching a particular time or what happened or what were the aspects around this. It could be something from my own life or something from history that brings that connection and actually, it was one of the articles in your review that got me thinking about that. It's the one by Thea Anderson called The Imperial 95 mm-hmm. that's at Sugarland, Texas, and the discovery of African-American bodies that were buried there in the prison system, the penal system. I mean, wow, uh, such an excellent article with charts and everything, of course. So just thinking forward for your listeners and even for me, what would bring someone to Kaylee? You know, certainly their own interest in the books, but also solving those problems or looking into the history. And uh, one last thing before we break, I wanted to get from you was, what are the elements that we could find in the books there that would answer some of those questions? Like, if I had a question about a moment in time, and then how things moved from that moment, can you give me some good tips on what I could look for? Like, if I walked in and said, look, Jen, this thing happened, and I want to understand and how it's connected to me or how it's connected to another moment in time. Where would you tell me to start? 
Oh my, this is an on the spot question. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it would be a mundane question. So I would break out all of the various mundane works to go into either the elements of beginning how to do mundane astrology, because the natal descriptions of houses and planets pertain to the human personality mostly in the modern tradition. But in mundane ways, even Elspeth Eberteen, my favorite mundane astrologer, talks about in her works, she was trying to make it popular for people to understand and get into mundane analysis and talking about what the seventh house means and the tenth house means in terms of a nation state, for example, but also in the terms of an event. You know, I think you're going to see a mix of mundane first and foremost, if we're going historical, but then there are elements of horary that I think could help inform looking at the mechanics of something and how it might unfold from that point. And then the other cool thing would be to bring you over to this section of stuff that was more self-published in these binders that don't necessarily have like, they're not like the kind of published books you would see in Barnes and Noble and see if we could tear through those and see if there's any kind of analysis. Thea Anderson specifically, who was our first guest on Within Orb, has a really beautiful way of looking at the chart of an event to unpack the various factors and forces involved, especially in the history of uh, enslaving Africans because of the idea that we don't have birth times. They weren't given you know, the, yes. the care of having a birth time recorded. So how can you, for example, her article in TMA about Harriet Tubman, like how can we read Harriet Tubman's chart? You can't. But you can talk about the moves of her life and events that took place and, you know, unfold that. And I think that's a very important thing that she's contributing to astrology. And so it is mostly mundane in that way. But I think that elements of horror could inform it. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I look to my next visit. (laughs) I can't wait to have you here. Imagine stepping into a room of 5,000 astrology books, turning a corner and stepping into a room of 2,000 more. The Celestial Arts Education Library is every astrologer's dream, and it can be yours. I invite you to come support Kaylee before you can visit physically. Your support will mean the creation of 52 new episodes of Within Orb next year, four issues of The Kaylee Review, our inaugural journal, and countless book talks, events, classes for our community. Visit our website, support to select your level of care. Please help support Kaylee into the future, our future, so that we may study the future together. Thank you for listening. Please enjoy the rest of the show. Okay, so if you were going to tell someone who is astro curious where they could go to learn more about what you are so in love with, which books would you tell them to see or read? Okay. We're going to the pantry for the, uh, I think I, oh, I can't remember her name, but uh, one of your recent guests recommended yeah. Robert Hand, and I think more than more than one, The Planets in Transit, because it has that wow factor of, wow, that's accurate. And that's kind of what you need to get really started and curious. So I compare it to like the first 10 pounds you lose when you're trying to lose weight and you realize that something is working and you get super motivated and Planets and Transit does that for me. I love that image. But the question is, are those first 10 pounds easy or hard? They're hard because you're breaking habits. Okay. You might be trying to break down the barriers of being a skeptic and, you know, just trusting. And it does take focus. Yeah. So, yeah, but once you get past that barrier and you realize that they're actually, you know, these things actually can happen or do happen and there is some pattern. And it may not be right on every single pattern or everything may not make sense, or you might need to use a different chart type to get your answer. There might be better methods, blah, 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 but you've got, you are in, you are excited about it and you are in for the ride of your life because it's a life work. I love it. Yeah. 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 Studying planets in transit, almost like homework. You're going to track the current astral weather and then you have to learn everything else. (laughs) Absolutely is. Yeah. um, Another book that I would recommend is The Essential Guide to Practical Astrology. This is by April Elliott Kent, and she's living in San Diego. She's uh, one of my teachers as well. She was president of the San Diego Astrological Society there for a while when I joined. And I love the way that she talks about ideas and she uses visuals and she, like you, like you use artwork, you create your own artwork to convey ideas and things and concepts. She does that as well. And I'm a visual learner and using stories and teaching concepts really works well with me. So, so she takes that approach here in her book. 
She organizes things. She puts in astro tips in the middle of paragraphs to help you like grasp, you know, the bottom line of a concept before you move on to the next one. Love that. Oh, that's so wonderful. Um, The next one is like one that you've recommended before. It was one of my first ones as well. Um, The only astrology book you'll ever need. This, uh, you can see it's dog-eared and everything. This another is, (laughs) is an older edition. But I haven't gone back to books like this. There are many other books like The Only Astrology Book You'll Ever Need, which is a pretty presumptuous title, but I think it was. (laughs) It still works, though. I mean, it's still in print, so. (laughs) But, you know. uh, Oh, no, 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 no. Now that gives me an idea. Now we need to make a new version called The Real Only, because John Frawley has The Real Astrology, right? So it's like The Real Only Astrology Book You Actually Will Ever Need, right? Actually Will Ever Need. (laughs) Just extend the title a little bit and throw all of the traditional stuff in there. (laughs) To be fair, the author, uh, Joanna Wolfolk, does laugh at that, you know, in her foreword. But yeah, yeah. it's like the publisher picked it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 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 That's definitely a book I would use. Um, I was thinking of the books that you actually, when I took your course, that Mm -hmm. you, as a, you know, I was a beginner. I still, and I'm an enthusiast now, but. Um, you actually gave us some books to use. You had the Ptolemy book, mm-hmm. the Christian astrology, and I and think the blue yeah. book on heavenly spheres. Book, yes, the yeah. blue book. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. That's one. That was, can you say that titles for listeners? On heavenly spheres. Yes. Thank you. That book, I think of, of all the books that we had in your course was the most helpful in techniques and I would highly recommend that book for techniques. I would, I still reference that book for because you will forget some of the techniques that were successful for you before, or maybe you just haven't tried yet because you haven't had the need. So that would definitely be another alternate book that's more current, I suppose, but also very helpful. Yeah, they really do a good job of synthesizing the meat and potatoes of classical astrology without necessarily picking sides of like, oh, well, we're only going to talk about, you know, the way Lily writes out the bounds, for example. Like, there's all these different ways that you can see in the tradition that different astrologers have sort of made a small polish or spin on the nuance of a technique. And they're like, here's the basic technique. And if you want to go that way, go that way. And if you want to go that way, go that way. But it doesn't really like, you know, it gives you a full lay of the land. I really love looking back at, you know, at the Ptolemy books, at the the books that collect all of the old astrology, the, you know, the, the early astrology, you know, before astrology techniques were even written down, or at least before they were recorded in the texts that are still around today. But when you're able to go back that far, and then you get that comparison again, you get to, I get the source, and I get to interpret whatever I read from there, based on that source, because I think what we do find is a lot of repetition, but then we can, we find that authors have gone down the rabbit holes of areas that really just haven't been explored yet Mm -hmm. yeah i love that warren right we have a little warren but it's underground stars above but all the little tunnels we can dig it is amazing to hear your love of the sources come through and i'm so glad that you were able to find time and come speak with me about that and share your love of astrology and and just also your love of magic and plant magic that just has to be said because that's such a direct way to engage with star stuff here on earth you know beyond just looking it's actually the touch and the kind of engagement so and the healing yeah for sure yeah Yeah. absolutely so how can people find you they can find me on instagram on facebook but really you can find me at danaconnor.com that's the best place to find out what's happening uh, with me in the world. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much, Dana. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Bye. Thank you for listening to Within Orb. To learn more about the Celestial Arts Education Library or to become a member, visit our website at kaylee.institute. That's www.caeli.institute. If you enjoyed this episode, please help spread the word. Follow or subscribe to Within Orb in your podcatcher of choice. Rate it five stars or write us a happy review. This helps others find the show. We also want to give a big thanks to the indie band The E-Block for contributing their song Wake Up for our intro and outro music. You can find them at their website, eblockband.com. This is Jen's Art, signing off for now. See you next time.